manager Eric Adams made maple syrup. I love you, front row lady. <laughs> I love you all. You all love me. We love each other. That's inaccurate. They want us to. It'll be a good thing to do. Better hurry up. Time's flying by and I'm spending my time looking for my Jeep keys. <laughs> I got a Danforth Pewter keychain, it's a cat keychain. All my Jeep keys, it was my mother's, died a year and a half ago. It's an heirloom. <clears throat> All my Jeep keys. Lost them five times yesterday, can't find them. Where are my Jeep keys? Are they in the cookie jar? I don't have a cookie jar, I should get a cookie jar. Put them in the cookie jar, I don't have a cookie jar. Where in the heck are my Jeep keys? Ladies and gentlemen, I can't find my Jeep keys, I gotta get to TEDx. I gotta get to TEDx. I'm gonna call my friends. It's over, friends. I can't find nothing. I'm looking for my Jeep keys, ladies and gentlemen. They're not in the drawer. I'm supposed to put them in. Where are my Jeep keys? I can't find my Jeep keys. I'm looking for my Jeep keys while I'm driving my Jeep. They're sitting in there. The keychain's dangling back and forth. Cat's looking up at me going, you only get one life. <laughs> <laughs> it's flying by. Obama's gray. Because he had a stressful job? No, no. Because we knew him first when he was 44. Now he's 56. <clears throat> the guy that gets the shopping carts up in Morrisville at the Hannaford's grocery market, the F is always blinking up there. <laughs> he was 44, Rob. Brown hair. He's 56 now, gray hair. Now, either getting shopping carts is as stressful as being president, <laughs> or 44 to 56 are the peak green years. Talk about change. Rob Apple is here. Rob Apple. Is it up to 600 million here? 700 million? 800 million? In this place that's going to screw out the village because everybody's going to stay up here? Oh, I don't like that. I love it. I love this place up here. I, I used to be 67, 1967. I'm sleeping in Stowe Hollow, dreaming about skiing up here. Dreaming more about the chocolate cake with vanilla icing. The ladies at the Spruce Cafeteria used to make about 30 of them set out 65 cents. And they'd put them on those round paper plates and put the cling film over them. And the cling film would compromise the icing edges, you know. <laughs> and you get that cling film off and you take that cling film. And there'd be three lines, a back, a side, in the middle of icing. And you take your plastic spoon and you'd go down, take that icing right off of there and you'd put that icing in your mouth and you'd take that icing off of that fork and there'd still be some icing left in the back tines. You'd save that for the chair lift up and you, you'd, take that, you'd take that spoon and fork and you'd cut that cake and it would make a noise. It was so moist. <laughs> Three weeks ago, I go to eat lunch at Spruce Camp. What did I get? Oh, a big bowl, an oriental bowl of noodles and chicken juice and chicken parts and vegetables. And the thing was so big, my cat could have bathed in it. And I ain't going there. You write the joke. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was AIG week. I took my bowl. Smelled good, sir. And I say, hello, Bill, AIG. Name tag. I said, Bill, can I sit here? He said, yeah, yeah, his wife, eight-year-old boy, 12-year-old daughter. I sat down, and they were scared of me. And I, <laughs> or, I said, Bill, you may have paid for this place, but I'll tell you, you, the wife and kids better stand clear when I start into this noodle bowl, because there ain't no gall darn right way for me to eat noodles out of juice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially with chapped lips and a frozen mouth, you know? And the poor eight-year-old boy, he's looking at me just the same way my cat looks at me after I do a loud burp, you know? He's like, he's like, he's like, hey, Mom, let's go back to Hartford. And I'm thinking, I must look like a smacked behind if that kid wants to go back to Hartford. <laughs> Not spend the rest of the day skiing in Stowe. He did stay, and he was eight, and he loved it like I loved it. And I, change? Standing in the same spot, I parked mom and dad's 1968 Chrysler Newport. It was green. Put up, I was 16, put on my frozen boots. <laughs> yeah, somebody's laughing backstage. 41 years ago, I ain't progressed. <laughs> And I'm glad I ain't progressed, because I like it here, and I like this theater. Beautiful. People nay say it, though, don't they? They say, oh, who, who, who designed that? They don't even have a backstage, can't even do Oklahoma. And I'm thinking, good. <laughs> who the freak wants to see Oklahoma again? 
Now, although, although <laughs> with weed being legal now in Vermont, that theme song of Oklahoma makes more sense, right? There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. <laughs> And if anybody knew anything, they'd cast a real Vermonter as Curly, because he would sing, there's a dull green haze in the back for a day. <laughs> Boo, there's a dull green haze in the back for a day there. My two adult plants are high as my kitty cat's eye, and I've picked it and dried it, and it's ready to boil. All right, man. <laughs> I always said legalized dope. I always said it. I didn't always say it, but when I said something about dope, that's what I said. Never smoked it, true, never will, probably. I said, then they legalized it. Then I'm thinking, maybe not, cause. I saw you know, a lot of old time stole people here. I saw Annabelle on the street the other day, 90 she is. Looks great, the news is, right in front of the Stowe Town Hall. I said, hi Annabelle, how you doing? Pretty good, Ron? Oh, but my 95 year old husband, Fritz, ain't doing good, right? I said, no, Annabelle, she's oh yeah, Ron. 95 year old husband Fitch broke his hip and his femur, right? So I said, No, anybody. She said, Oh, yeah, right. How'd you do that? Oh, yeah, right. She's up on ladder painting Fitch. 95 broke his hip and his femur, right? I said, No, anybody. No, yeah, right. I said, How high was he? She said, Not too high. He only had two bong hits. And then I thought, Maybe. <laughs> maybe think twice about legalizing dough. I think it's a good thing, you know. Now the cops don't have to pretend they don't know you got a bag of weed in your pocket, you know what I mean? Talk about things not changing. Now, one door down, you got the plate restaurant. For you folks ain't been here a long time, used to be the funeral parlor. <laughs> Very beautiful tradition. If I'm the door, there were two big lanterns on each side of the door that were always off until somebody died. True. True. Roderick Stafford, the funeral director, would put them on when someone died. It was a big deal. People wouldn't die for a month, month and a half. You come home at midnight after a gig, myself, and there the lights are on. Now, you know you're going to know who died. You go home, you get up early, go down to Mansfield Garage, where Maplefields is now, and the boys be having their 5 o'clock tea, you know, but, 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 you know, a little bit of tea they'd have. <laughs> You'd ask them who died, and they'd tell you. I always thought, even as a kid, the lights are on because the lights went out. I like that tradition. Now Mark and Jamie seat me in that front window, and oh, I love it, eating that stuff and looking at the main street I grew up at. And uh, funeral parlor, restaurant, change, same. People gather there. I don't order the liver at plate. <laughs> Steer clear of the digits demiglas, you know what I'm saying? But it's food to die for there, and I wrote all those jokes. And I ain't getting paid. <laughs> Head right across to the, you, you know it as the Helen Day Art Center. Beautiful to have art. And uh, the library. Now, I, used, I went to high school there. Did you people know that? You folks know that? Yes. Up till 73, that was Old Yeller. It was yellow. We called it Old Yeller. And uh, seventh grade, halfway through, and then around April, we all walked up to the new school back then. High school, library, the same. Still a place I don't ever want to go to and not read in, you know what I mean? <laughs> you come out of the Helen Day Arts Center and it's one of the most magnificent sights you'll see in your lives anywhere is that Stowe Community Church, behold it. Quarter of 11, growing up, and I mean this, every Sunday I'd ring the bell, call people on. Now my friend, Chris, last year, he ain't new, he's kind of new here. He said, I'm new here in the world. Well, I'm turning 60, what should I do? To celebrate my birthday, you've been here a while, I said, go sit on the steps of the Stowe Community Church and take it all in and see the passers-by. And he did, and he loved it, and how can thousands and thousands of people be wrong who come from all over the United States, the world, to take pictures of that church? And the steeple is how many feet high? 167 feet high, the tallest steeple in Vermont. I love that place. The select men and the select women of town, over the years, Done a fantastic job, I say. A lot of signs in the village, they need to be there, but they're not the neon large signs. Crime, none. You can, you can thank them some for that. I will say, some of the Stowe taxpayers claim it's a crime they gotta pay for the new ice rink. But I'm just... <laughs> no laugh there. <laughs> but I didn't, I live in Elmore now. 
I'll tell you, I don't know who's in charge of this, but one thing that has not changed is the location of the potholes. They're in the same freaking place it was 50 years ago. Boo, I can miss every one of them blindfolded. I go right around them, you know. You get them self-driving cars, you'll be all in good shape. Farms? No, there's fewer farms. You can bet that, but I talked to Dan Pike. Somebody talked to Paul Percy. I didn't see Arthur Larry Morrill. I didn't see the Rickesons, but I know the word is Stowe is uh, producing more milk than it ever has ever. <clears throat> Same size herd, that's key. Less food, key, less phosphorus. That is a good thing. And I say, um, don't worry, because every, every farm that we lose in Vermont, we gain 17 farmers markets, oh Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for that, ham and cheese and wine and grapes and god darn. You know, when you can call yourself a farmer if you crochet wind socks, stripes almighty. You know, <laughs> you, think, you know there's a farmer's market, farmer's market? <laughs> yeah, I went to it last year. All the booths are full of farmer's market, farmer's market people who are promoting their farmer's market that they ain't at. You know that famous t-shirt says, Vermont, more cows than people. I'm gonna make one that says, Vermont, more farmer's markets than cows and god darn people. I'm telling you what. Mert Pike, Les Pike's father, his father, Carol, farmed. Now Dan and the girls are farming. Uh, uh, Mert Pike's 98, April 20th. If you, if you hear tell of him, visit him. If you're, if you're heading out of Stowe, down, uh, you go past uh, the car wash. I call it Dollywood. It's a weird place. And uh, <laughs> a little bit further is a mailbox with balloons, April 20th. Stop in, see Mert, 98. Oh! Legend, you will be inspired, you'll be flying when you walk out of there. When he was 51, he was fertilizing this time of year in the spring, in the back 40, lost both his legs. Took nine months off, come back with prosthetics, gets up on the International Harvester, farms till he's 96, uses a wheelchair now, that's the truth. He won't let you go to his door unaccompanied. He pushes himself up out of that chair and pushes himself down in the wheelchair. You're sitting there going, I ain't worth that. <laughs> and then I was going uh, to dinner. Remember when it was cold? Wicked. Uh, this early winter? Early winter, it's cold. I had a date. I was going to dinner, and that's a, that was a change right there, having a date, you know. <laughs> it didn't get any warmer later in the evening, either. I tell you. <laughs> But I did, and uh, out comes Sonny and his wife and a, and, a, and, a, and a party, and they said, hey, it's Sonny's birthday. He's an old Morseville guy. I said, Sonny, happy birthday. And we're heading down this restaurant, and I was in the back. And I said, Sonny, been cold. I said, hey, I, I kind of like the cold, Sonny. I said, uh, don't bother me. Does it bother you? And without s s skipping a second, he looked over his shoulder and he said, I don't like it, but it doesn't bother me. I said, well, I, said I, I come from a generation where when you don't like something, you're bothered. <laughs> well, we're bothered when we like stuff. I mean, we're freaks, you know? Anyway, the Sonny Demarses, the, the Mert Pikes, these are people that I bow down. I stand in deference to, and I say, if you would, please, take time and stand yourselves or sit yourself on the steps of the Stowe Community Church sometime, and it, 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 it bears standing and sitting, and not, not, don't all go there at the same time, you know. <laughs> People be driving through town, looking all the way up there, and they go, hey, a farmer's market. And they'll be like, hey, and uh, stand there, and I say, when I hear people say, oh, did you hear about old Joe? He died, but now he's in a better place. I think, where did he, where did he live? <laughs> Because I live in Elmore, Vermont, grew up in Stowe. There ain't no better place. I think, I'll tell you this, I lived a life and now, and now this is heaven for me. I don't want to sound weird. <laughs> I see all you people all around the town and I love all of you. And I think it's heaven here. I think we have something here in this bubble have, does heaven have latte art contests? <laughs> See you later, bye now.